As we bring day 987 of this Trump administration to a close, yet again tonight, we are in brand new territory, all of us. That is because today, in broad daylight, with cameras rolling and a helicopter waiting for him, the president said something out loud, roundly believed to be impeachable. Here is California Democrat member of Congress, Ted Lieu. There is more than enough evidence right now to draft articles of impeachment. Here's Berkeley Law Professor Oren Kerr. What if a president committed an impeachable offense on TV from the South Lawn and no one in his party cared? I worry we may be, we may be about to find out. Here's how the always proper New York Times puts it quite simply tonight in their headline on the web. Trump publicly urges China to investigate the Bidens. And that is indeed what we heard the president say. Well, I would think that if they were honest about it, they'd start a major investigation into the Bidens. It's a very simple answer. Uh, they should investigate the Bidens, because how does a company that's newly formed and all these companies, if you look at and by the way, likewise, China should start an investigation into the Bidens, because what happened in China is just about as bad as what happened with uh, with Ukraine. I have it, but uh, it's certainly something we can start thinking about. So that right there, Trump's call for the Chinese to investigate the Bidens comes as he is facing impeachment charges for pushing the Ukrainians to investigate the Bidens while withholding military aid from the Ukrainians passed by Congress. As that investigation moves ahead, new reporting about the administration is emerging tonight. The New York Times says Trump's diplomats pushed Ukraine to commit to inquiries into political rivals. The Washington Post writes that a former diplomat tells House investigators that Ukrainians gave Rudy Giuliani bad information about the Bidens. The Wall Street Journal's on the board. They reveal Trump ousted a U.S. ambassador to Ukraine after complaints from Giuliani and others. Also from the Washington Post, there is apparently another whistleblower, an IRS complaint involving the audit of either the president's or vice president's tax returns. Today, we saw the first witness in the impeachment inquiry appear on Capitol Hill. Kurt Volker, who resigned last week as Trump's point man in Ukraine, was interviewed for over nine hours, closed session by House investigators about his dealings with Ukrainians and his dealings with Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. New York Times reporter Michael Schmidt and his colleagues write that Volker and Gordon D. Sondland, the United States ambassador to the European Union, quote, drafted a statement for the country's new president in August that would have committed Ukraine to pursuing investigations sought by Mr. Trump into his political rivals. The Washington Post says Volker told House staff that he, quote, tried to caution Giuliani that his sources, including Ukraine's former top prosecutor, were unreliable and that he should be careful about putting faith in the prosecutor's theories. And the Wall Street Journal reveals that one reason Trump ousted our U.S. ambassador to Ukraine had to do with assertions from his friend Rudy Giuliani that she was, quote, undermining him abroad and obstructing efforts to persuade Kiev to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden. Meanwhile, Trump is ramping up his attacks on the Democrats. Here's what he said to an audience of seniors during a Medicare-themed event in Central Florida today. If you want to drive him crazy, just say eight more years or 12 more years. Or 16, 16 would do it good. They would it. You'd really drive him into the loony bin. And that's why they do the impeachment crap, because they know they can't beat us fairly. That's the only reason they're doing it. They can't win. They can win. Tonight, a source tells NBC News that the White House plans to send a letter to Speaker Pelosi as early as tomorrow, and they'll say that they won't turn over any documents related to Ukraine until the House votes to officially open an impeachment inquiry. Yesterday, House Democrats said they planned to subpoena the administration for those records, Democrats will hear from their second witness tomorrow when Intelligence Community Inspector General, that makes him the ICIG, Michael Atkinson testifies behind closed doors.
before the House Intelligence Committee. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.